From the traditional and unceded territory of the Clay Claytonay First Nation and the heart of Northern BC, welcome to the CNC Podcast, 50 years, 100,000 alumni. At CNC, we're learning together, changing lives and creating futures. Welcome to the CNC Podcast. I'm Mark Cargillotto. The forest sector remains a big deal here in British Columbia. It's responsible for 100,000 jobs and $8.5 billion in wages and salaries, as well as benefits. So it makes sense why CNC would be heavily involved in the education of professionals to work in the forest sector. We do that through the Natural Resources and Forest Technology Program. And we wanted to give you a bit of insight into this because it's a vitally important program uh, to be able to steward the forests, but also to be, be able to make sure that we're responding well to the needs of forests today and for tomorrow. And to do that, we brought in a student. John Marquis is in his second year of NRFT, and we're thrilled to have you here on the CNC Podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mark. I'm uh, excited to be here and talk a bit about uh, what we do in the program on a day-to-day basis sort of deal. Yeah, well, can you tell me about how you ended up getting interested not only in the program, but also in spending some time uh, out in the forest? Yeah, so right out of high school, I actually started working in the forest industry, but um, as an equipment operator and then as a truck driver and then as an equipment operator again. So I got a good um, feel for sort of what was going on on the ground, but I didn't really have an educational background to understand maybe why we were doing certain things. And um, I heard every day, you know, on the radio, the the industry's modernizing and shifting, but at my work, I felt like it was just go, go, go. Let's maximize production here, guys. And uh, I said to myself, like, you know, I want to, I want to get an education and and, uh, see if I can maybe bridge some of the, the gaps between what's going on on the ground and and the people who, you know, are making the decisions. And I felt like with my background, I'd be in a good position to do that. How did it work out then when you started studying? What, uh, how was it different from what you expected or even what you expected? Yeah, see, as a mature student going back, you have a lot of, uh, you know, questions. How's this going to be? Is it, uh, um, (laughs) am I cut out for this kind of deal? And um, I found when I went back to school, um, the workload was similar to a day at work and uh, that part wasn't too big of a transition really. Um, I think um, it's a good program for mature students going back, you know, I really uh, strongly believe that because my biggest, biggest sort of uncertainty was, am I going to be able to find work? Is this a, is this a good move? And there were so many good industry connections that instructors had. And I think everyone in the class found work in their first summer. Um, Yeah. What were you doing in your first summer then after uh, uh, after your first year? Yeah, so I got a job with Canfor right off the bat. And um, um, instead of going out to the field in a cab of, an, of a machine, I was going out there with my uh, boots on the ground kind of deal. And um, my main role was to go to the forest and collect data on the health um, of the timber and the health of the ecosystem and then use those to make recommendations Um which I bring to professionals, forest professionals in the office. And yeah, it was exciting. How has your perspective changed then? Because you had that, that time, those years that you were working in the forest, then doing your education here and going back out there. How did you see things differently? Do you think? Yeah, I see, I see the value of education. I mean, I, I thought I'd go to work and I'd put in a good day's work and do what I thought was a good job. And pat myself on the back. But once I started learning more about the ecosystems and how my decisions out there were actually impacting things on the ground, I, I really, uh, gained a respect for knowledge and, and that sort of inspired me to do my hardest, um, put in my hardest work in the program. And it really benefited me in that way. What do you see as sort of the future of forestry, whether it's your role within it directly or even where you think that the industry is going, uh, given what you've just studied here and what you're going to be applying as you graduate and go in the field? Yeah, so I think the big thing is that um, right now we're really managing forests. Um, we're trying We're trying anyway to take into account other values other than just the resource. So we're thinking a lot more about wildlife. We're thinking about m- more recreational values and um, sustainability is a, is a word that comes to mind um, right away. We're trying to not only you know, maximize production on the ground for today, but we're trying to make sure 
this industry is going to be able to support um, our children and grandchildren and so forth. So that's that sounds like quite a bit, quite a lot to uh, weigh. But I think, you know, everyone in the class is is thinking and trying to trying to think of ways that we can sort of accomplish this. And, and uh, that's pretty cool to see. Can you take me through an average day then? If you're talking to, you know, your 18-year-old self and that, who may not have been that heavy equipment operator and truck driver, what is cool about doing NRFT and then the knowledge that you gain from it? Yeah, so I think um, the really cool part is we have a huge field com- field component in the program. So you you start out in the classroom and you will learn a skill, you'll hear all about it and probably till you're sick and tired of reading a book, but then we transition into the field and you start to go, oh, wow, that that extra reading that the, the professor suggested was actually very valuable. And um, yeah, it all comes together once you get out there in the field in this program. And you'll find that in your first summer of work, um, it'll come together there as well. Yeah. Now, you're not always working in the field, though. I think when we were talking earlier, you it sounds like you like fishing, though. Can you tell me about that? Yeah. So, you know... I hear a lot of people uh, sign up for forestry because they want to work in the field and uh, you will get to do that. And uh, you'll, you'll be satisfied in that regard because starting out your first three or four years, there's a lot of um, work to do in the field, but you'll, uh, you'll also be doing office work and um, you'll be, yeah, you'll get a really healthy mix of both, I think. And I I also think there's room in the industry for people who maybe are tech people and um, computer people we have um, GIS courses in this program where you're making maps and analyzing data. And uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting in that regard too. And I think we need more people that um, are into that. There's other jobs where you're flying drones and, and uh, yeah, editing, editing photos and it's, it's cool stuff. <laughs> now you'd mentioned though, I think at one point though, that you, you went out, you finished your job a little early, yeah. but you had some time between the helicopter coming to pick you up. Can you, can you fill me on that one? Yeah. So the beauty about forestry is that if you finish your, your job for the day, um, you might have an hour or two to spare and you look around and go, wow, look where I am. I'm in a beautiful area that maybe I took a helicopter to get here and I wouldn't be able to access on my own time. So we wear these big vests in forestry and they're kind of like a backpack slash safety vest and you can fit in quite a few things. And I like to carry a little fishing rod, a little collapsible fishing rod. And um, at my work last year, that's what happened. We finished a few hours early and there was a beautiful stream. Um, and I could actually just see the fish from up on the bank swimming around. And I thought to myself, oh man, like what, what a treat to, to end a day fishing in a pristine little river. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, what What do you think has been, do you have a most challenging moment or even, dare I say, a most embarrassing moment in that in your first uh, while in the woods? Definitely. Um, I bumped into an alder tree uh, branch and they can be quite thick and nasty. And I, I bumped my nose and I got a nosebleed actually. And uh, I remember sitting there with a bleeding nose and the, the bugs flying around and the devil's club. And I thought to myself, man, <laughs> this is tough. But uh Looking back on it, I can laugh. And, you know, that was that was one day in a summer. I uh, th- Those experiences happen, but few and far between, really. Oh, yeah. No, understandably. Uh, what do you think is the best advice that you'd offer someone who might be looking at NRFT or even something about working in the resource sector altogether? Yeah. Um, I, think, I think people that I've talked to that, you know, maybe don't have an outdoorsy sort of background are a little intimidated and they might find the industry sort of unapproachable in that way. Um, I'd suggest, you know, going for a, going for a hike or a walk in one of the trails around Prince George and, uh, bring a backpack full of stuff, water, snacks, bug spray, and, uh, see if it's something you enjoy or you connect with or, or it, um, sort of resonates with you. And I think, I think if, it, I think if it does, you're going to have a lot of memorable experiences in this field. That sounds terrific. Yeah. Thank you so much and uh, all the best as you embark on your new career. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. I'm uh, starting a new job at Dunkley Lumber in a few weeks and uh, couldn't be happier. Glad to hear it. Thanks Thank for you. Having me.